On rare occasions in professional sport, dynasties arise. The New York Yankees of Ruth and Gehrig, Bill Russell's Boston Celtics, and the Green Bay Packers of Vince Lombardi. In the rarefied air of thoroughbred racing, only one farm can lay claim to the term dynasty, Calumet. Calumet Farm stood at the apex of thoroughbred racing and breeding in America for 50 years. During the 1940s and 50s, they totally dominated the sport. From the farm's conversion to thoroughbred breeding and racing in 1931, until the death of the farm's matriarch, Lucille Wright Markey, in 1982, Calumet was the leading money-winning owner 12 times, won a record eight Kentucky Derbies and seven Preakness Stakes, had two Triple Crown winners and three National Philly Triple Crown winners, had 11 horses and two trainers elected to the National Museum of Racing's Hall of Fame. 16 Calumet horses captured a total of 35 year-end divisional championships, with five taking Horse of the Year honors. With immaculately groomed paddocks, sparkling white fences, and barns trimmed in the farm's famous Devil's Red, Calumet was and remains the quintessential bluegrass horse farm. The Calumet legend began in 1931 when Calumet baking powder heir Warren Wright inherited the farm from his father, William Monroe Wright. The elder Wright had established Calumet in 1920 as a standard bred breeding and racing operation. While on his deathbed, he fulfilled a lifelong dream of winning the Hamiltonian. Warren Wright had been introduced to thoroughbred racing by yellow cab magnate John Hertz. Upon assuming control of Calumet, Warren Wright ordered the majority of the existing buildings raised and set forth to build the finest thoroughbred breeding and racing stable in America. Mr. Wright was a perfectionist he attacked his new venture as he had his previous business. He was in this to win, and win he would. For those fellow owners and breeders who viewed racing as a casual hobby, a new day was dawning, a day that would see their horses eating the dust of a seemingly endless string of great Calumet runners. In just two decades, Wright's business-like approach would transform the sport he loved. In 1936, Mr. Wright made two purchases that would have a tremendous effect on the future of the farm. He first bought a quarter interest in A.B. Hancock stallion Blenheim II, and later purchased Bull Lee at the Saratoga yearling sale. These great sires, along with perhaps the finest band of broodmares ever assembled, became the foundation for much of Calumet's future success. From 1941 through 1950, Calumet stormed to the forefront of thoroughbred racing, winning 20 divisional titles and five Horse of the Year honors. A long-tailed colt named Whirlaway led the way, winning Calumet's first Triple Crown title in 1941 and was named Horse of the Year in both 1941 and 1942. A throng in the throes of frenzy as Whirlaway, number four, smashing the derby track record in the time of two minutes, one and two fifths seconds. Kentucky's heartthrob riding to gold and glory. In 1944, Calumet came close to its second Triple Crown title, after Pensive won both the Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes, but fell short in the Belmont. That year also saw Twilight Tear, named Horse of the Year, the first filly to receive that honor. In 1947, a two-year-old colt named Citation won eight of his first nine starts, establishing himself as the major contender for the next season's Derby, Preakness, and Belmont. The following year, Citation did not disappoint his supporters, taking 19 of his 20 starts, including Calumet's second Triple Crown. It's all Citation, just as most of the experts predicted, going on to win by three and a half lengths. At season's end, he was voted Horse of the Year, Best Three-Year-Old, Best Three-Year-Old Colt, and Best Handicap Horse. Of all the great runners to carry the Calumet silks, Citation was perhaps the greatest. Calumet hardly skipped a beat after Warren Wright's death in 1950. Under the guidance of his widow, Lucille Parker Wright, and the farm's two future Hall of Fame trainers, Ben and Jimmy Jones, Calumet's famous Devil's Red and Blue Silks continued to dominate winter circles from Belmont to Santa Anita. Colts 
Hillgale, Iron Liege, and Tim Tam provided the farm with a record six Kentucky Derby trophies. Bull Lee continued to dominate its stud, leading the general sire list in 1952 and 53, and the broodmare sire list in 1958 and 59. During the 1960s and 70s, the farm's fortunes dimmed slightly, but against anyone's standards except their own, they still remained in the highest echelon of racing's elite. In 1978, Alidar teamed with Affirmed to provide some of the greatest racing in North American turf history. Alidar finished second to Affirmed by a length and a half in the Kentucky Derby and closed the margin of defeat to a neck in the Preakness. The 1978 Belmont Stakes will be remembered as one of the most exciting races of all time as Affirmed and Alidar dueled through the stretch neither horse giving quarter. As they approached the finish, Affirmed pulled ahead by a nose to become Thoroughbred Racing's 11th Triple Crown winner. In 1982, Lucille Wright Markey died, and according to Warren Wright's will, the farm passed into the hands of Warren Wright Jr.'s heirs. Partly due to the downturn in the thoroughbred market and partly through mismanagement, the farm went into a precipitous tailspin, resulting in bankruptcy and a forced sale of all land and horses in 1992. Sold the farm for $17 million. Purchased by Count Enric de Fiatkowski, Calumet was returned to respectability. Once again, the farm's red and blue silks became fixtures on American tracks. In 1979, Margaret Glass, the farm's secretary since 1940, had the foresight to realize that with Lucille Wright Markey's declining health, a decision needed to be reached over the ultimate fate of the more than 500 trophies and 28 paintings amassed by the farm over the past five decades. Together with Keeneland Association CEO and future president of the Breeders' Cup, James E. Bassett III, for whom this gallery is named, they ultimately were able to place the collection on long-term loan at the Kentucky Horse Park's International Museum of the Horse. With the farm's demise in 1992, the trophies and paintings became pawns in the attempt to pay off Calumet's many creditors. In December of 1996, the Horse Park and Museum were notified that the collection, the last of the farm's assets, would be sold through the federal bankruptcy court. By February, Bassett, Glass, Park and Museum officials, and several concerned Lexington community leaders came together to form the Save the Calumet Trophies Committee. Over the next 20 months, the committee raised more than $1.2 million from concerned Kentuckians and thoroughbred racing fans around the world. In the 1998 Kentucky General Assembly, the legislature appropriated an additional $1.5 million to keep the trophies in the bluegrass. After continued legal wrangling, which kept the fate of the collection in doubt up to the final moment, the trophies and paintings were finally purchased for $2.7 million by the Kentucky Horse Park on September 4, 1998. At the campaign's end, some 1,189 donations had been received from all 50 states and four foreign countries. The hardware won by Calumet's horses over the five decades prior to Mrs. Markey's death in 1982 is by far the most extensive in the history of racing in America. There are 524 trophies in the collection, 270 silver, 138 gold, seven crystal, and one ceramic, as well as 105 silver and three gold julep cups. Above and beyond the trophy's significance to racing, the exquisite workmanship shown over four centuries by American and European artisans distinguishes this as one of the finest exhibitions of its type in the world. Under the guidance of Warren Wright Sr. and Mrs. Lucille Wright Markey, Calumet rose to a position of dominance in thoroughbred racing unlikely ever to be duplicated. Through these five decades, Calumet not only won, but one with class. With time, the magnitude of the farm's accomplishments will only grow. Through hard work and astute and creative management, Calumet created a dynasty that transcends racing and stands as one of the great accomplishments in the history of American sports.